The deep squat stretch, also known as malasana in yogic terms, is a wonderful way to stretch and strengthen and tone the muscles of the pelvic floor, the hips, the legs. But as you can see here, there are a lot of things that are required for the deep squat, a lot of strength and flexibility. And not everyone is able to get quite all the way down into the position. So in this video, I'm going to take you through whether you're a seasoned squatter or you are just getting used to your squats, I'm going to take you through some exercises, stretches and strengthening exercises that are going to help you move toward this ultimate deep squat position that I'm going to show right here in the image. I encourage you to always listen to your own body and if it's not feeling right for you and your needs, then please don't go into the full position. However, a lot of people, even with prolapse, have benefited from this position. Proper positioning and proper breathing are really the keys to doing it safely. So you will need this uh, setup of props, the yoga mat, yoga strap, or belt, or necktie, and yoga blocks. Go ahead and grab those now. So let's go ahead and get started in a standing position. You're going to begin with your feet nice and wide, more than shoulder width apart. You are going to have your toes turned slightly out and strong and engaged through the core. Make sure you lift your toes off the ground to really engage your arches and keep your arches lifted. We're going to move back into a slow lowered squat. So slowly lowering down, holding it, and then exhaling up. Now I'm gonna show you from the side so you can see that I'm really sitting back and I want you to keep going with these squats. Sitting back and also keeping my spine really long and my core nice and lifted. Slowly lower down, sitting way back and then exhale up. Now I'm gonna show you now that you want to not let this happen. Really monitor yourself as you're sitting back into the squat. Make sure that your bum is really going back that turns on your glutes even more. If you tuck your bum under, your glutes will not be firing effectively. So let's go ahead and go down again, slowly, slowly, slowly. We wanna go down for five counts, pause at the bottom, and then exhale up. So again, five slow counts down, sitting way back. Only go as far as you can comfortably go and then exhale up. Make sure that your knees are pointing forward. They're not knocking together. Sometimes the knees can drop inward. We don't want that. They want to track over the toes. Exhale up. But about those knees, also don't let them go beyond the toes. Don't let them go forward of the toes. Exhale up. Last time here, slowly sitting back. Again, we're working on the strength of those quads in this eccentric contraction and exhaling up. All right, come down onto your stomach. Our next move is a great way to strengthen the muscles of the low back, also needed in this deep squat position. We're gonna go into Shalabhasana. You wanna stretch one leg out behind you and then the other, so you're really long on the floor. Hands are by your chest. Elbows point straight back toward the back of the room. Lift your head and your chest off the ground and then lower down. Again, elbows are hugging inward, squeezing inward, and pointing toward the back of the room. Lift your chest and head off the floor and lower down. You're going to feel your buns working, your low back working, but don't lift your legs quite yet. Keep your legs on the ground. Exhale down. Inhale up, and exhale down, keeping those elbows pointed back. All right, now stretch your legs out one at a time again, strong through the whole back body. Lift your arms off the floor, kind of like Superman style, like you're flying a little bit, not straight out in front of you, but out to the sides. Lifting as you inhale, and then exhale down. If it feels better for you to exhale as you lift, you can also do that too. I just want you to breathe steadily. Now on this next one, lift everything off the ground. Everything lifts and then you set it down. Again, everything lifts. 
and set it down. Last time here. Everything lifts, squeezing the buns, squeezing the legs together and set it down. All right, come on to your hands and knees briefly, sit your hips back, and we're going to move into a wide kneed child's pose. So your knees nice and wide apart, and you're gonna crawl your hands forward as you sit your bum back on your heels. Now, if this feels pinching in your low back at all, then absolutely bring your knees closer together. This should feel very relaxing for the buttocks muscles, a gentle stretch in the inner thigh and groin area, and also really nice on your back and shoulders too. Breathe deeply into your back body, into your kidneys, into your low back. One more nice deep full breath into your low back, into your low belly. and then prepare to come on up. Bring your knees together and move into a seated position and we're gonna come into a butterfly stretch. So begin with your feet, soles of the feet together. And really the goal here is for you to sit up nice and tall on your sitting bones and really lengthen your spine. So lift the crown of your head toward your ce the ceiling and you should feel a stretch in the inner thighs right away. Now folding forward as I'm showing and kind of pressing into my inner thighs is only an option for those of you who have the flexibility. If you don't have the flexibility, that is totally fine. Just sit up nice and tall. You can even have your hands on the ground. What I'm showing here is how I am shifting my sitting bones back, which can actually help if you move the flesh of your bottom back with your hands, that can really help ease yourself into the stretch a little further. So again, you can be simply sitting up nice and straight and tall with your hands on the ground or folding forward like I'm showing. Finish up here one more breath in and out. And then lift your heart and gather your knees together. We're gonna come into another type of groin stretch. So really stretching out those inner thighs. Right now I have my right foot in toward my groin and I'm simply stretching forward. So my right foot is in toward my groin and my left foot is out long out to the side. Make sure that the leg that's straight, so for me it's my left foot, make sure that the toe and the knee are pointed up toward the ceiling, they're not falling inward. Simply walk your hands forward, breathing deeply and stretching. One more nice deep breath in and out. And then carefully lift your heart and crawl your hands back. You're gonna do a nice little hamstring stretch and calf stretch here. So either hold on to your toe or the outside of your foot with your hand, or I'm gonna show you in the inset how you can use a strap wrapped around the ball of your foot. Now I want you to really bring those toes back toward you or the foot back toward you, flexing at the ankle, and this will increase the calf stretch. I also want you to notice my hand on my bent leg thigh. See how that hand is actually pressing down on the inner thigh area of my bent leg. That increases the stretch. You'll feel it really nicely in the hip and inner thigh on both legs when you do that. So finish up and we're gonna move on to the other side, same exact thing, so simply switching foot position, sitting up really nice and tall. Again, you can scoot the flesh of your bum back by using your hands to actually scooch your sitting bones back behind you. Walk your hands forward and just fold forward, feeling this nice inner thigh, inner groin stretch, and making sure that your outstretched leg, your straight leg, the knee and the toes are pointed up toward the ceiling and they're not falling inward. Mm -hmm. 
One more breath in and out. And then reach your heart forward and crawl your hands back. And then either use your peace fingers to wrap around your big toe or the outside of your foot to really flex the ankle of that outstretched leg and stretch out your calf and your hamstrings, or you can use the strap as shown in the little inset video. Really again, feeling that stretch in the back of your hamstrings and the back of your calf on the outstretched leg, but also pressing into the thigh of the bent leg so you can still feel that inner thigh and groin stretch on both sides. Finish up with one more nice deep breath in and out and release your foot, release your toes and come on back. We're gonna actually end up on our back with a strap. If you were not using a strap before, I encourage you to grab one now unless you're very, very flexible. I'll show you here how you can, if you are very flexible, use your fingers around your toe or the outside of your foot. But again, most people will really benefit from a strap. And even though I'm flexible, I love using a strap too. It just makes my practice so much deeper. So wiggle that strap around till you're in a nice position. You can either hold on as I'm showing or loop your hands around, which makes it so that you don't have to use as much grip strength. So my left leg is bent up. My right leg is the one I'm stretching. If you want to straighten your left leg, you can, although I prefer to leave it bent. Make sure that in this nice hamstring and calf stretch for your right leg, make sure your pelvis is square, that it's not shifted up on the right side. Your pelvis is square and your back, your spine is straight along the ground. You wanna breathe deeply into the back of your leg, the back of your calf, and just relax. See about maybe easing a little bit more into the stretch. The longer you stay, the more you can deepen and soften. Your muscles just let go. Imagine your muscles releasing their grip on the bones can be helpful to bend your knee and actually press into the strap and then straighten the leg and see if maybe you can go a little bit farther. Now keeping your legs straight, press outward like you're going to press your leg down toward the floor and then release and see if you can maybe stretch a little bit further. Breathing deeply. We're holding this for a long time because the hamstrings tend to be pretty tight on most people. Now your left leg drops out to the side and your right leg drops away from it, keeping the right leg straight and keeping the strap held tightly in the right hand. I like to put my right elbow on the floor, kind of like a kickstand to help prop my arm up. And again, I'm holding on to the strap with my right hand I'm also holding onto my pelvis with my left hand because the left side of my pelvis wants to pop up, but don't let it. Keep the left side of your pelvis down. Your pelvis is square on the ground. And again, left leg is kind of flopped out to the side, almost in a butterfly position. That helps counterbalance this right leg, which is stretching out to the side with the right leg straight. Now bend that right leg, release the strap, and go into half happy baby. So you can keep the left leg dropped out to the side, kind of like a, a half butterfly, and your right side, you are grabbing onto the outside of the right foot. The knee is bent, the foot is flexed. Feel like you're pulling that right leg, thigh, down toward the ground. Breathe deeply and then release the leg. And we're gonna do the same series on the other side. Now you can just switch straight to the other side. I am simply turning around because if I didn't, I would hit the wall when I do the leg dropping out to the side stretch. So starting with the hamstring stretch, again, the leg that's not stretching. So for me, this is now my right leg is not stretching. It's bent up. 
My left leg is now the stretching leg, so I am using the strap around the ball of my foot. Now I like to loop my hands around the strap so that I don't have to use as much grip strength, but that's just an option. Keep the pelvis square on the ground and keep your back so that it's in one straight line on the ground. You wanna ease that straight leg, the stretching leg, so again, my left leg, ease it toward you as you breathe deeply into the stretch, feeling the muscles of the hamstrings and the calves just release and relax. Now slightly bend that left straight leg just a little bit and press into the strap. Press, 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 and then straighten your leg and see if you can stretch a little bit deeper, a little further. Pull the straight leg a little more toward you. Now ease off the pressure and then press your foot, your straight leg foot in toward the strap. Press, 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 and then ease off and pull the leg toward you a little bit more. Breathe deeply. And prepare to drop that leg, the straight leg, out to the side. So you're going to grab the strap with your left hand. So right leg drops out to the side, butterfly style. Your left arm comes out to the side with your leg. I like to have my left elbow bent. I use it to kind of prop myself up like a kickstand. Now it's not actually touching my left straight leg. It's just holding onto the strap. Play with position here. If you don't look quite like I do, if your leg is not quite that high up, that's totally okay. That's why you have this strap so you can play with positioning. Okay, bend up your leg and grab onto either your big toe or the outside of your left foot and you're gonna come into half happy baby here. So you can, again, have your right hand on your right thigh, the leg that's flopped out to the side, and then your left hand is holding onto the toe or the outside of that left foot, really thinking that, feeling like you're drawing the thigh bone of that left side down toward the ground. Release, bend your knees, and roll to your side. Next up, we're gonna work on stre stretching our calves and our hamstrings a little bit more by downward facing dog. So you wanna be on your hands and knees and then walk your knees a couple inches back. Tuck your toes under, and then just walking one leg out at a time, walk out your dog. You want to feel your way into this downward dog position. The measurement here is that when you're in a plank, you should be able to press right back into downward facing dog. So if you wanna measure that, you can. Otherwise, just see that you look like I do right here with your knees bent. You don't need to worry about having them straight quite yet and really reaching your bum up toward the ceiling. Spine should be flat and straight. Press into your hands, fingers spread wide like starfish. Fingers are wider than your shoulders. And then if you can lower your heels toward the ground, that's great. This is also an option. You can use one foot to actually press the opposite heel down toward the ground. This is not required, but if you wanna try it, it actually feels really nice. Maybe try the other side. See about using the opposite foot to press the other foot down, the other heel down toward the ground, lengthening the back of the calf, feeling that stretch in the back of the ankle. And then come on down onto your hands and knees just for a rest. You can sit back in child's pose, roll out your wrists. It's a lot of work on the wrists. 
We are gonna go to into downward dog again. And the next time you're in down dog, I want you to really think about pressing into your fingers and the knuckles of your hand. So not so much into the base of your wrist or the base of your palm. You wanna really kind of gently claw your fingers in toward the ground so you're spreading out the pressure evenly and it's not just all dumping into your wrists. So again, spread those fingers wide like starfish. Hands are wider than your shoulders. Press up into downward facing dog. Really lift the bum up toward the ceiling. And this time we're gonna see how it feels to do a wide leg down dog. So feet are spread out toward the edges of your yoga mat and see about reaching the heels toward the floor. Now maybe they can't and that's okay. It's totally okay to have your knees bent. The key is really that we want our back flat and you wanna look like you kind of look like an A, a capital A. Now look forward, bring your feet together and your knees can be bent slightly here. We're gonna play with what happens when we think about arching our low back and then tucking our bum under just a little bit. So this is a very subtle movement. Just think about lifting your bum toward the ceiling and then letting it release. Lifting your bum toward the ceiling, letting it release. Lift your bum toward the ceiling, let it release and see how that works your low back muscles. Now look forward and walk your feet forward, really engage through the abs the whole time. And we're gonna release our wrists by stepping on our palms. So your knees can be strongly bent, try to rest your belly on your thighs, and maybe you can even wiggle your toes around. That can feel nice if your toes are right in your wrist creases. So again, you're standing on your palms. Go ahead and let go. Nice straight back and one more back exercise. So lift your heart flat back like a tabletop and release down. Your knees can be softly bent and again you inhale flat back and release down. We're going to do this a couple more times. Just make sure the knees can be softly bent. You inhale really think about flat back. Your hands can be on your shins or dangling in midair. Again, you are going to inhale, flat back, hands dangling or resting on your shins, and release. Again, inhale, flat back, hands dangle or on your shins, and release. And this time, just cross one arm over the other and widen your feet slightly apart. And as long as this doesn't hurt your back, just let yourself hang, ragdoll fold. All right, we're almost done here. We're gonna work ourselves back into a low lunge. So step your right foot back, left leg is in front of you, right knee, back knee can be on the ground, and both hands are to the inside of your left foot. So again, both hands are to the inside of your left foot. Shift your hips forward, let them sink forward. This is a variation of lizard pose. Now you can start to bend your elbows and see if you can go a little bit lower. You can also have yoga blocks and put blocks under your forearms if you wanna bend your elbows more and really get your arms way down toward the ground. Another option to deepen the stretch is to lift your back knee up off the ground. So lift that back knee up. Really feel this in the left inner thigh because again, the leg is nice and wide to the outside of the yoga mat. Set that back knee down. And now I'm showing you again how you can go a little deeper. Really try to bend those elbows, working them down toward the mat or not. And now we're going to very carefully switch sides, work that left leg back toward the back and we are gonna bring the right leg now forward toward the front of the yoga mat, nice and wide. Hands are now to the inside of your right foot. And your heart lifts. Back knee can be on the mat as shown or you can lift it, tuck the back toes and lift it off the mat. Either way, do what works for you. 
Just think about sinking both hips forward so that your bum is not shifted back. You wanna shift your hips forward. Lifting your heart and breathing deeply. Again, I'm just showing how you can lift that back knee up off the ground. It's just an option. And you can also set that back knee down on the ground and work the elbows toward the floor. Try to keep that heart shining forward. And now coming up, we're gonna actually move from this position into a deep squat. So you can either, as I'll show, you can step your back foot forward. I'm gonna show that after I show a beginner variation. So wave yourself up and the beginners, you can bring your front foot back, tuck your toes and then rock into a deep squat. Now, if you're more advanced, you can do what is about to be shown. If you're more advanced, you can go from that lizard pose and then engage your core, strongly lift your belly toward your spine and as you exhale, step forward, come right into that deep squat stretch. Now, no matter where you are at, how you got into this pose, you can come down, feet nice and wide, toes and knees tracking over one another, slightly turned outward at the toes, lifted through the spine, lifted through the core. I'm showing you a front view in the big picture here. This is just a front view. But in the inset picture, you'll also see how you can absolutely do this on a yoga block. So sinking into this deep squat stretch, this was our peak pose, what we had been working up to. So hopefully it feels really good for you. Stay lifted, press into your inner thighs with your elbows. And then very carefully come on down into a very brief little child's pose with your hands out behind you. So just take a quick little second in child's pose, sitting back onto your heels, hands behind you, just like a little tiny egg a little ball. And then take a deep breath in and out and prepare to come onto your belly for just our final couple of stretches. Stretching out the body nice and long. Bend up both legs. This is just a different way to twist stretches out the quads a little bit, the thighs. So twist your legs side to side, both feet drop to the left and to the right. Again, just a different way to twist your low back, releasing your low back, and also stretching out your quads and the fronts of your hips in kind of a different way. My forehead is just resting on my hands. Now take a minute to just completely relax into the mat one leg stretches out behind you and then the other. Release into the mat. Really relax. One or two more deep breaths and then we're gonna do a final quadricep stretch, a final thigh stretch. So bend up your right knee, your left arm is there supporting you in front of you and you're reaching around toward your right foot. Now kick your right foot back into your hand and see how it lifts your chest up off the floor. A couple more times, kick that foot back, lift your heart and chest and relax down. We're gonna move on to the other side now. So bending up your left leg Use your left hand to hold on to the left foot and then kick your left foot into your left hand and see how that lifts your heart and your chest off the floor. Release and relax and prepare to flip onto your back for a nice Shavasana. Relaxation, final pose. This is one of the most important poses you can do. 
I really encourage you to take the time to let your back body, the entire back side of your body sink into the yoga mat, the back of your head, the back of your shoulders, the back of your pelvis, the back of your thighs and calves. And if this was a great workout for you, if you felt like you really want more of this great backside sculpting, uh, strengthening and stretching exercises, then I encourage you to check out my Booty Glute Camp downloadable bundle. And definitely keep tuned to my channel. I have new videos every week. So I hope that I'll see you back next week. I actually have a progression, a stepping up your deep squats that's going to take deep squats to the next level. So if you're ready for that, definitely come on back to my channel and I really appreciate you being here. As always, remember, eat clean, move every day, and you will shine brighter. Thanks for watching.